Black, beautiful, and dynamite. Those are the words that I would use to describe the new documentary on Netflix called Black Barbie. So go ahead and come on into the room because we got some things that we need to talk about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody, if you are new here, welcome. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoiler alerts up in here. So if you have not watched it, press pause on this, go on over to Netflix, binge watch it. It's only an hour and 30 minutes long, and then come back because we got some things to chat about in the comment section. But before we get started, put in the comment section your thoughts, your feelings. What were your impressions after watching this documentary? And before we get into it, I just wanted to let you guys know that we have a special guest today. Her name is Chrissy. This is my mom's doll that she has had since she was about eight or nine years old. And after watching this documentary, I made her go through the archives find it and allow me to bring it on here to show you guys. She has some magical powers with her hair, but we'll get into that a little later. So make sure to stick to the end. So the first thing and the only thing that was appropriate to start with is representation matters. I know we have been saying that all over the internet, all over social media for a while now, but after watching this documentary, it really did show me that representation matters seeing yourself in other people, in other careers, on television or any other place is extremely important. And since we're specifically talking about Black Barbie, we wanted people to know that Black is beautiful too. And in order for people to understand that, embrace that and bring that into their world, they have to see more of it in all of the facets of our life. And I'm not just talking about that fake representation. I'm talking about real representation of what Black folks look like. We're talking about our hair and the textures that come along with it. We're talking about our fashion and our jewelry and how we dress. We're talking about our skin complexion and our skin tone. We're talking about our careers. We're talking about all of the different facets of what it takes to be a Black woman, specifically a Black Barbie. But too often, we have been seen as invisible. Too often, no one sees our shine. Too often, we're the background person and not the main character. Remember when everybody was on that main character energy? Like, we are rarely the main character when it comes to mainstream society. And so, for that to even be represented in the dolls and the play and the things that we're supposed to have fun with is kind of sad. I mean, really, think about it. To look out into the world and not see yourself represented it does something to your heart. It does something to you internally that leaves a lasting impact no matter how we really want to slice that thing. And the thing that really stood out to me from this documentary was the Clark doll test. In 1940, Dr. Kenneth Clark did this experiment and this test with young children where he allowed them to have a black doll and a white doll. And he basically asked them questions like, which doll is considered good? Which doll do you like? Which doll is prettier? Which doll do you see yourself as? And unfortunately, all of the children pinpointed the white doll as having positive characteristics, more beautiful, more liked, all of those things. And they attributed the black doll with all of the negative characteristics. Heartbroken. And while that is extremely sad, that very test and that experiment was a game changer. Look at it. I mean, that happened in the 1940s and we're still talking about it today. That allowed that test to help inform the decision for Brown versus Board of Education. But we can't really say that representation matters if we can't show up in the realest way possible. We can't say representation matters when we're only showing a little piece of a drop of the United States population or a piece of a drop of a person's culture or a piece of a drop of a thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Let's show this in its full totality. If you don't know, I am one of those people who try my best to represent across the board. Your girl grew up in Cuff in California. I'm not ashamed of that. I typically wear my hair in a big twist out in its natural style, even though I have it pulled back today. But it's imperative and it's important for me to do that. I am on national television and shows and podcasts and all of these different spaces where there's a lot of young girls and young boys watching and listening to me, I want them to look up and say, hey, if that girl from Compton can make it, 
so could I. Hey, if that girl could wear her natural hair and her natural hair texture on television, so can I. And so you never know who's watching you. You never know what little boy or little girl is watching television or seeing you behind the scenes or seeing what you're doing in your community or seeing you in your workplace and saying, whoa, that's giving me the energy. That's giving me the stride. That's giving me the desire to want to be a thing because I seen someone else do it and now I know that it's possible. Heck, we had a whole black president. <laughs> And now we know that things are possible because we have seen people do it before us. The second thing that I want to talk to you guys about is generational impact. Even the writer or the director of this documentary basically stated that she didn't care nothing about no Barbie dolls. She wasn't interested. That wasn't her thing, but that was her family members thing. And so she decided to peel back the layers and explore what this entailed. Why was she so big on all of these dolls and collecting them? She didn't even know how impactful her own family member's story and testimony is to the world. I can't even imagine if she didn't explore. I can't even imagine if she didn't dig a little deeper to say, what is the backstory here? This is something that we may have never known about. I'm thankful that Beulah in this documentary was sharing her story about being a former Mattel employee and working on the lines and Ruth Handler coming to her and saying, hey, how can we do things better? What do you wanna see more of? And Beulah said, we wanna see a black Barbie, hurry. But I don't know if Beulah would have even mentioned that if her mom did not have a love for dolls and that trickled on over to her and now she's collecting dolls and now that's trickling on over to her family member because she's doing a whole documentary about the thing. And even though in Beulah's time, there were only white dolls and that's all she knew, she knew that there was something deeper and something that she wanted to see that was not out in the market yet. And just by her mentioning it, just by her stating a word, just by her seeing what would happen, Ruth Handler took that into consideration and that began the legacy or the metamorphosis of what we are seeing as the Black Barbie over all of these decades. Now, while I was watching this movie, I know that I didn't necessarily have a whole bunch of Barbie or black Barbies growing up. That really necessarily wasn't my thing. I remember a lot of black dolls being already in the market and all of those things. I remember seeing like Bratz dolls and black cabbage patch. I remember my cousin had a black cabbage patch. I definitely had some regular baby dolls, but they were not black. So I felt like I had or seen a variety of what black and white dolls entail. But when I was watching this, I was like, I remember my mom stating she had this Chrissy doll. She would always talk about this Chrissy doll, Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy. And I'm like, who, what is a Chrissy doll? And so I had her pull this out of the archive. This, you guys, is a Chrissy doll. And I looked on the back of her bootay, okay? And she has a little stamp of approval that said this doll was created. Yeah, I'm showing y'all her butt cheek. It was created in 1969. So this is one of the authentic Chrissy dolls. Now, she does not have on her original clothing because we can't find it, but this it's a pretty big size doll. And while this isn't necessarily a Barbie doll, it just shows how all of these years, after all of this time, my mom chose to keep her Chrissy doll. One, because it was supposed to be a black representation of what the white Chrissy doll looked like. But also too, she had these little superpowers that I found out and my mom showed me about it. And I said, what is going on with Chrissy's hair, okay? Chrissy, she need a brush. I mean, she old now, okay? Chrissy is old, <laughs> but look at her. But one of the things my mom showed me is that her hair changes and her hair grows. So on the back of this doll, if you guys can see, there's a little twisty, windy thing that you can twirl. And then on the front of her, there is this little, basically kind of like a little belly button. It's like a button here <laughs> that you can use to expand or retract her hair. So her hair is short now, but if you were to pull it, <laughs> it magically grows. I'm not sure if you can see that because of my black shirt, but it magically grows. So why this side is short and this side is long, I do not know, but her hair grows to be super long. And if you want it short again, all you have to do is just wind her up on the back and then her hair magically goes back to being short. And I don't know who invented this or why that was the case, but I wanted to show you guys this because even though 
you know, we didn't have Barbies or my mom didn't necessarily have a Barbie. She remember getting this doll when she was like eight, nine years old at Christmas time. Her siblings and her all got dolls of color. And while I can't say that this doll represents the facial expressions and the facial features of what you know, black folks really look like, I think it was a good step in the right direction for a young girl in, you know, the 70s to have a doll of color. So I don't know where Chrissy's original clothes are. My mom done made her new clothes or had her friend make her some new clothes so she wouldn't be naked. But I thought this would be a really great and a cute thing to show you guys because it made me think of this and also how impactful it can be for generations. Heck look, this doll is super duper old and I'm talking to y'all about this in 2024. So maybe Christy was developed for this very moment. The third thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the current shift that is happening. While we talked about representation and how it matters and how we didn't see that for a long, long time with dolls and Barbies and things of that nature, we have to give it a little bit of props and a little bit of credit. There has been massive changes in what we see in the Barbie space. We see Barbies with disabilities, we see Barbies with vitiligo, we see Barbies that are albino, we see Barbies with short hair, with long hair, with different skin complexion, different career choices. We see a wide range of Barbie dolls and I appreciate that. If I'm being honest, I don't know if it's enough. I understand that there has been progress, but there's still some subliminal messages that are being sent to you and I as adults, but also being sent to our children and our babies that says, still that isn't enough. At the end of this documentary, there was basically another test that was done with some younger kids with baby dolls of all different races, ethnicity, size, laid out on the table. And they had a therapist there pose questions to the babies, honey. And the baby was like, the real Barbie is the white one <laughs> because that's all I see on television. That's all I see in the movies. That's all I see with the blonde hair and the blue eyes, right? And they had kids that were of different ethnicities and they all said, this is the main character. And unfortunately, the black Barbie and all of the other differences that we see in the Barbie space were sidekicks, right? They were already friends with Barbie or they were, you know, popping up sporadically and it wasn't just a full thing. And while Mattel has made some strides, we can see the messages that are still being told to our children, whether they verbally say it or not. It really still shows that black people are on the back burner in regards to the Barbie doll space. And it shows that we are sending messages to our children that says white is right. We're sending messages to our children that says classic Malibu Barbie and Ken is still the way to go. And if you don't look like this or show up as this or don't have the same things as this, you're deemed not valuable. And unfortunately, even the director and the writer's own niece said, even if Barbie was to show up as the main character and have her own story, I don't know how successful it will be because this isn't a narrative that we've seen in the dominant white culture. And that was sad to know that a teenager saw this because she seemed like what she saw of herself couldn't be successful. What she saw of herself represented could never be at the same level as Barbie because we have been seeing the opposite for so long. But I am glad that Mattel has chosen to make some great examples into Barbie dolls. We see Shonda Rhimes having a Barbie doll. We see ballerinas having a Barbie doll. We see black and people of color who are fencers and who wears hijabs that have a Barbie doll. To have that type of representation in the black community or with people of color is really important. But Shonda Rhimes said something so powerful and it's not even in my notes that I wanted to share with you guys about. She talked about the burden of being the first a lot of times. And I don't know if this is gonna resonate with a lot of people because so many of us haven't necessarily been the first. And I'm not talking about being the first, you know, biggest person on the planet, being the first in your career, being the first black person to fill in the blank. But sometimes we're the first black person in our family to go to college. We're the first black person to get married. We're the first black person in our family to do fill in the blank, to write a book, to do all of the things, to be on television, to do 
all of the things that I just mentioned creates this generational shift in our family, in our space, and in our realm of influence. Sometimes even those things have a burden. Sometimes it's like, whoa, when is the next time somebody is going to be able to come behind me and get this opportunity? I can't mess it up. I can't fumble the bag. I can't retreat. I can't quit because there is some little black girl or some little person of color over there watching me. And if I give up, then they're going to feel like it's not possible or attainable for them either. And that's not the energy or the message that we want to convey to the younger generation. One thing I know about kids, they are very intuitive. They know when they're not accepted. They know when they're not the main character. They know when the first Barbie was a white doll. And then years later, the second one came and it was just like, oh, well, we should probably make a black one now. They know when stuff like that happens. But it's apparent the messages are not congruent, right? We don't see Barbie, black Barbies as the main person in the movie. We just saw a whole... We just saw a whole Barbie movie that came out, remember? And it was all this promo about it and it was crazy and everything was pink everywhere. And I didn't see the movie, so I don't really know what it was about to be honest with you. But even in that, the main character, even though there were people of color and Issa Rae and black folks was in there, they were still not the main main, right? And so even in mainstream and on television and TV shows and YouTube specials and dolls in the store. We see things being underrepresented and it impacts us whether we want to believe that or not. And before I give my final thoughts on this, I remember there was recently, probably like two weeks ago, there was a post that was going around on Instagram of this white woman who went to her local store to try to get her daughter some baby dolls. And all of the baby dolls in the store were black or of color. All of the coloring books had people of color on them. Like it was just a blackity black, black, black store. I don't know what neighborhood or where this was or if it was representative of the demographics around the store, but she went on live complaining about how she was trying to get her baby a doll and they're all black and she didn't want to buy a black doll. And you know, do they think that only black people live in this neighborhood? And it was like, are you that dumb? <laughs> to not realize that this is what black people and people of color have been experiencing their whole lives. How many times have we walked into a store and there's absolutely positively no doll, no doll, no doll, no coloring book, no nothing that looks like us. So then it's either like we don't get anything at all or we just have to settle for what is there. I've seen tons of people of all different races with black baby dolls. I love, love, love being out. I remember I was out at this festival or somewhere and there was this white couple and they were pushing their daughter in the stroller. She had to be maybe like three years old, but she had two black baby dolls with her in her stroller and she was the happiest, okay? And nobody said anything to her. I think it's important to make sure that you are showcasing all different colors to your kids. It's okay to be white and have a black baby doll. What is going to happen when your kids go to school and they go to daycare and they are around all of these different races and they don't see that representation in their own home or being talked about at home. So when they go and they're exposed to different cultures and ethnicities, they're going to be confused. You don't want that to happen. You want to start at home and start early. The messages that you send to your kids at home matters. The conversations that you have with your kids about race matters. The conversation that you have with your kids about diversity, inclusion, representation, belonging matters. And I'm not talking about on this grand scale that we talk about, you know, in the workplace, but just talking about it on the level and the age that they are at. Talking to them about age appropriate things is important. They're going to grow up and be an adult who is well-rounded and who is going to be able to interact with other people because they understand how the game works. Now, my final thoughts on this is the documentary was done really, really well. I love how they had real live people. I love how we got a little personal with the writer and the director. I love how they had Shonda Rhimes and you know these celebrities talk about what their experience was of seeing the first black Barbie. I didn't even see the first black Barbie. When they showed it on the screen, I was like, oh, that's what she looked like? I had no clue. But it was also because we didn't see her in any commercials. We didn't see her on any ads. We didn't see her in any print magazine. She didn't get the promotion and the marketing that white dolls got. But also having people that work at Mattel 
in this documentary made it well-rounded. It wasn't biased. It wasn't one-sided. It wasn't like, oh, something was missing. I love how they had people who worked there. They had commentary. I think it was a really well-done documentary. Sometimes we'll look up and see documentaries like that, and they'll be like, Mattel refused to comment. And it's just like, hold on, Mattel, what's going on here? You gotta say something about the matter. Hopefully this documentary will bring more conversations like this to the forefront, not only in our community and in our society, but also within Mattel and the toy making industry, because this isn't just about Mattel. This is about other toy making companies, other people who build baby dolls, other people who do fill in the blank. They need to hop on the bandwagon and get this representation thing together as well, because it will benefit us all as a society. Quick story, I remember my very, very, very first office when I became a full-time entrepreneur was right next to the Mattel building. If y'all didn't know, the Mattel building still exists here in the Los Angeles area in El Segundo. So I remember they used to bring these huge big old boxes to our office and put them inside of the lobby. And I would walk in and I would see all of these toys sticking out of this box. And I'm like, what the heck is this? So I would talk to the front staff and she would be like, oh, every few months, Mattel would come over and drop off toys. And it's basically free range. You know, whoever wants toys, if you want them for your kids, if you want them for yourself, like you can do whatever and grab as many as you want. And I thought that that was really cool. It wasn't necessarily like the newest things, but I don't know if it was stuff that they didn't use anymore or just things that they were working on, but they used to bring toys to our office all of the time. I remember grabbing some toys. I don't know why, cause I ain't got no kids. Or I didn't have any young folks that young in my family who would play with things like that, but I did grab some things. So Mattel being down the street from my office or very close to my office definitely had an impact on me as an entrepreneur, which I thought was super duper cool. I love the fact too, that they said in 2025, we are going to get a new release by Kitty, okay? And Kitty is the one who did all of the designing of the black Barbie with the hair, with the outfit of the first black Barbie. So we are going to see in 2024, what she will come up with that is going to be representative of the culture. Well, thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Please feel free to stick around, like, comment, subscribe, watch some other review videos on movies and TV shows that I have done, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.